Hey everybody, Doug Schulze here with the iTime Ranger Group, talking about practical ideas to ensure a healthy discovery application. And in this video, we're going to be talking about errors and reporting. Something that a lot of folks have a lot of challenges with, and hopefully we can be able to respond with a lot of good information, help guide you um, in doing your day-to-day -day work, because obviously this is what our bread and butter is. This is our our job, is really troubles you, well, well, excuse me, while we set up Discovery pretty straightforward. Our day to day is troubleshooting errors and getting information out of out of the system to help better support the business. Now we're going to talk about uh, how we can track and manage these errors. Now the first order of business is understanding. There's a great new product out, and that's a Discovery Admin Workspace. And I'm just going to jump right into it. Now I'm not going to get a deep dive into this, um, but uh, there's are a few videos out there that are already existing, but I just want to highlight it yet again. Under your workspaces, you have Discovery Admin Workspace. And here you'll see this great new admin console that allows you to quickly see what's happening, what type of in your environment, looking at the queue loads and even error tasks that you can better do. We might remember those the cards from the Discovery Workspace. The first kind of iteration of this between you, me, and this here fence post, I never got too much value out of it. This is a great leap forward in understanding, a deeper understanding of what's going on within your environment, all the way down to diagnosing your schedules, where they're located at. Remember, I recommend utilizing that location value. Looking at the diagnostics. As we pause and watch the paint dry, understanding what errors you may have. This is our lab environment, so we're really good at managing our errors. Looking at logs, ignore errors, support tools, your content 360, and even down to tuning your environment. If any of you may have just seen the knobs and switches, the discovery properties. Here's um, my contribution to this is understanding things that should be done within an environment. So we actually automate this for you um, in this workspace. So making it even easier for our discovery friends out there to do the good work in, in providing these services. So definitely take a look at that and understand how you can best use this to support your business. But one of the other things beyond just utilizing that discovery admin workspace, one of the things I do, because I've been around since the horse drawn discovery days again, as I like to say, and as, as some of us still call the old gray beards of Unix computing, is I like reports. I just do because I can massage it, show it, filter it, everything that I need to see that that's valuable. And reality is me as a discovery admin, I found at the foundational levels, my work has always come in access. Hey, those first credentials going in. First time I see that Windows host on the network, do my credentials work or do they not? Because once I'm able to talk to that target, I'm going to be able to roll with the rest of the discovery. The probes are going to run. The patterns are going to run. Things are going to start coming in. Sure, there's going to be errors or there could be errors in those cases and such. But hey, if I can get through the front door the first time, I'm going to be able to uh, pretty much discover that system. And when I do do my reporting, I just go right to the view runs of the reports. And I say, as an example, I look for my discovery source that contains Windows classified, levels warning, and was created X days ago. So if you run your schedules once a week, created at or after seven days ago. And then remember when we talked about discovery schedules in the previous video, by the naming convention. So I can see, hey, this last week, the Tokyo Data Center had 80% of my access issues. That's where I can focus my work and my team's work to get the biggest bang out of my efforts to be able to get my CMDB populated. Now, of course, it goes to Unix classify. It can go to all the way down to identifying elevated privilege errors that we look for in our Unix and Linux type discovery where we're looking for pseudo or LSOF errors. Being able to see those also helps you understand because 
base discovery for Unix or Linux, I just need an SSH user. I can discover that system with that SSH user. But I need to run sudo or lsof to be able to get critical information from that record, such as the mainboard information, the manufacturer, the serial numbers, lsof to get the running processes and TCP connections. If I'm not collecting that, I'm having, I have an incomplete data set. So I want to be able to actually report off of those and say, hey, wait a minute. Here in Berlin, my SSH user is having a lot of pseudo issues, and I need to go to that team to get that resolved so I get good quality data within my environment. Again, it's rudimentary. A lot of different tools out there that I've seen my friends use. Uh, they parse them out into other tools. Um, you, you can utilize a lot of our HLA stuff even uh, to be able to parse and, and get these things out. Very great things to be able to do, but again, horse-drawn discovery days, this works for me, but maybe you can extend it to do even more. I have a lifelong community post out there, some of my favorite reports that I've done over the years, um, and many of it contributed to, so have a look at that and maybe help make your day-to-day -day job or day-to-day -day job of your admins a little bit easier. Thank you again, and we'll see you on the next video.